Hello everyone, today we are going to see another most frequently asked question in interviews and of course that's a basic point also, RMS, concept of RMS, why we should go for RMS value, what is the fundamental background of this RMS value, we'll see everything. Before we look at it, let's look at some basics which are known to us. Let's take a circuit, I'm taking a simple circuit. So we already know from our basics, I can equivalently represent this one as this. I can say these two are electrically equivalent. And why on what basis I am saying these two are equivalent? If you see current flowing through this is 3 amperes, if you solve this network, current flowing through this is 3 amperes and voltage across this AB is 15 volts and you will get the same here also current flowing in this if you solve this network also you will get here 3 amperes and voltage is 15 volt and of course we already know these two are in parallel so 10 10 parallel you will get 5 that's also alright so these two are electrically equivalent not just these two, I'll say this is also electrically equivalent of this. That is clear from substitution theorem. What substitution theorem says? I can say two networks are equivalent if the branch current and branch voltage is not changed. That means unless the response is changed, I can say these two are equivalent. Let's check the current here. If you try to find current here, here also you will get 3 amperes and the voltage across this will be 15 volts. Not just this, I can say this is also an electrical equivalent of this because still it gives 3 amperes and the voltage across this is 15 volts. Not only that, this is also an electrical equivalent of this. So basically, I can write this network in different forms, but all forms are electrically equivalent. On what basis we are saying they are electrically equivalent? If the response is same, response instance, if current flowing through this and voltage across this remains the same, then I can say these are electrical equivalent networks. And that's what even substitution theorem says. Anyways, this is what the basic, what you require for understanding RMS. And second basic to understand RMS is concept of heat. You might be surprised to know any damage in electrical engineering is just because of heat. You may name any damage. Maybe because of over voltage, people say over current, whatever the damage is caused to an electrical appliance, it is just because of the heat. There is no other reason. So, this is the only concern you should have when you are designing any electrical appliance. Okay, with these basics, we can go further, further to the RMS, but before RMS, let's give a touch to average value. What is average value? Which we already con come across, you know, in our daily life. Suppose I secured marks in one semester, in one semester, in subject one, I got 100 out of 100. In subject 2, I got 
zero out of hundred. In subject three, I got fifty out of hundred. Okay, so this is my one semester mark. So in one subject, I'm extremely good, hundred out of hundred. In second semester, sorry, in second subject of the same semester, I got zero. In the third subject, I got fifty marks. These were suppose fifth semester. They are the results for sixth, fifth semester. So, if somebody asks me, "What is your fifth semester marks? What is your fifth semester results? What should I say? Should I should I say hundred? My fifth semester results is hundred. Or should I say my fifth semester results is zero? Or should I say my sixth fifth semester results is?" This much. What should I say? I will not say either this number or this number or this number because either of these numbers is not going to give us the actual or effective value of this fifth semester. The effective value of my fifth semester results is average of these three. How do you do average? Sum of the marks. By number of samples, three. So that gives us 50 marks. So this 50, I will say it as my fifth semester results. So this is what we use in our daily life. So what is this basically? Basically, it is an average of given responses because my responses are not. constant my responses are changing so as they are changing to represent an effective number for this change in values we will take an average of all these and we'll say the effectiveness is the final value that's what the average value so we also name this one as it is also called as mean value average value or mean value so you can see the definition average value gives the arithmetic sum of all instantaneous values over a time period so this concept we are applying to the signals as well that's it there is nothing much difference okay let's come to the now rms rms railway mailing service Not that RMS. RMS means yes, root mean square. So I have now an alternating signal. I have some random alternating signal. It is not sine. It is not cosine. Any alternating signal I have. So what if I have to represent an effective value of this, like before? i'm not allowed to say zero as effective value or i'm not allowed to say either maximum value or minus maximum these numbers or any random figure here these are not the effective values of this whole signal so like before let's try to take average here also if you take average value here we get something positive and here negative over a time period if we take over a time period t if we take average of this signal it may turns out to be zero if it is symmetric if it is not symmetric you may get some non zero average value you may get some some value but that is also not effective value because we have some negative quantity here that negative quantity will reduce the total average so now what should be the alternative way of representing the effective value of this the alternative way of representing the effectiveness of this signal is heat 
let's consider heat because as i said in electrical engineering heat is everything for us in designing something we'll have to keep heat in our mind garmi heat ka matlab hai okay so let's try to find out the heat i have this signal and i am giving this signal to a resistor so if i give this signal to resistor how much is the heat developed in this resistor we need to find that so what i'm taking is i'm taking some samples small samples i'm taking n number of samples within this time period t i'm taking n number of equal samples so this span is t by n and this span is t by n 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 like that i'm taking n number of samples in this time period so each sample is having how much time t by n time like this okay now i need to find the heat developed in this span we know the formula for heat let me zoom a bit so that you can clearly see the equations okay so we can, we know the formula for heat that is i square rt so current in this is i1 so i am taking i1 square resistance value r t how much time this time is t by n so i1 square r t by n plus again heat in this duration i'm adding heat in this duration like that all heats i'm adding up so that i'll get heat developed in this time period so what is our motto our motto is to represent this instantaneous value as a single value so let's consider i want to represent with some constant value that's what the effective value some value let's take i effective now for the same resistor if i take if i take the same resistor and if i allow the same this current i effect through this i will get some heat so that heat will be i effect square r into t over some same time period what i have taken here i'll take the same time period and i'll try to find the heat because of this current this constant current so now from our basics we know i can say these two signals are equivalent these two are equivalent provided their heat is same heat developed this is equal to heat developed because of this so let's try to equate these two i am trying to equating this expression and this expression you may see here so i effective one square sorry i'm taking this expression this heat is equal to this heat if these two heats are same i can say these two signals are equivalent so i'm equating if you simplify this further i'm taking rt common and this rt this rt get cancelled so we'll get i effective square is equal to this much and if you notice what is this it is sum divided by number of samples that is nothing but mean of it is not just sum of individuals it is a sum of square terms all square terms of the signal are getting added so i can call it as 
average of squares of i. Average means, I also said, it is mean. We also call average as mean. Mean of squares of i. So this is what? Our mean of squares of i. So what if I want effective value? Effective value will be this square. If I take it that side, it will be root. So I will call this one as root of mean of squares of i. So that is nothing but root of mean of square r m s, root mean square. That is how this term has come. This is how the concept of root mean square has come. I hope things are clear for you. Just watch it once again to make it more clear. And this will be very much helpful in understanding many of concepts further. So let's come to the definition now. According to the definition, it says, it is a value of an alternating quantity. Any alternating quantity, not necessarily a sine wave. It can be any alternating quantity. Is that current which will produce the same heating effect as an equivalent constant current. This is a simple definition. It is a current which will produce the same heating effect as an equivalent constant current. That is called RMS value. So in short, we'll say effective value of an AC quantity may also be referred as RMS value. So whenever somebody says for an alternating signal, if somebody says 250 volts or 500 volts or simply 600 volts, whatever the voltage, is, if somebody is saying some alternating voltage as some figure, some x volts, that x by default represents RMS value. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for more updates and please share the video with your friends so that they will also get benefited. Thank you.